We are back with the League of the Genuine Conversations, uh, your only program uh, on the planet that deals with, uh, discusses the issue of counterfeits, fakes in products and services. Uh, we are not in the usual setting today. We are here at the Silver Springs Hotel uh, in Kampala. Uh, we have been participating uh, in a national dialogue on counterfeits uh, in agriculture, uh, organized uh, by USAID, so we had to shift it here. But today we shall not be talking about food or agriculture, we shall be talking about another very important um, aspect of our lives, which is transport. So to join me in the discussion uh, is the head of operations, uh, Tondeka, he will tell us what it is, uh, Mr. Edward Ulaineza. Edward, Correct. Um, yes. nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. I, I last saw you 15 years ago or something. True. Yes. You've been uh, where? In Ukraine or something? <laughs> huh? I've been traveling You've around. been traveling but, around. Uh, studying basically public transport systems. Public transport systems. Yes. I am seeing on your card here uh, Tondeka. Yes. Uh, what is Tondeka? I'm seeing you want to transform mobility. mobility. Yes. Just explain a bit what is Tondeka about. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, viewers. Um, Tondeka Metro Company is uh, a company that uh, is humbled to be given the opportunity to introduce the mass bus transit system in the greater Kampala metropolitan area. Mass bus transit system. So you are, you are Utoda? Uh, yeah, um, you are like we are Utoda? moving. Yeah, uh, we are a public transport company okay. uh, made up of, composed of most of the current players in the public transport. Uh, but uh, through a PPP arrangement, public, uh, public private, private partnership, partnership. Okay. we are in partnership with uh, Kira Motors Corporation, who are going to locally build and manufacture the buses and then Tondeka is going to operate these buses. Kira Motors, yes. the, the car manufacturer, the, the Ugandan car manufacturer. The Ugandan car manufacturer. So, uh, so you're manufacturing the, buses, cars with them? Y yes, we are, they are going to manufacture the buses uh -huh. and Tondeka is going to, as a private time, is going to operate these buses. Starting with them. I thought they are manufacturing buses and cars to sell to me and, and to yes, you. They yes. want to manufacture everything and give it to you? No, the aspect for the buses for public transport, oh. that will come to us. But yes, they have a much bigger mandate uh, to mm. also produce vehicles eventually. Basically, the aim of government is to do away with uh, second-hand vehicles, which are causing so many of these problems we see on our roads, and including... So are you also going to manufacture border borders? It appears as a popular yes. mode of transport. Yes, eventually Ugandans. they will get there. And key is that uh, we are moving from the use of fossil fuels to the electric um, uh, vehicles and motorcycles. Yes, and that will be an area that uh, they will move into. Now, this show, uh, Edward, is um, a show that is intended to create awareness yes. about the big problem of uh, counterfeits. Yeah. Now, in the public transport sector, we have a lot of issues. That is true. In the last one month in yes. Uganda, every week, there has been a motor accident, accident yeah. involving mainly buses, yes. matatus. Yes. Um, and coming here, I'm looking at the, the road traffic accidents, yes. um, World Health Rankings. Yeah. And it, it reports the death rate per 100,000 people. people. Yes. I want to show you where Uganda is. Yeah. Um, number one is Dominican Republic, 67 percent yeah. death per 100,000 people. Yeah. Number two is Zimbabwe yeah. uh, at 63 percent. Yeah. Number three is Malawi, 57 percent. Yeah. Liberia, 55 percent. Yeah. Eritrea, yeah. 54 percent. Uganda, 53.60. Percent. That's a very high death rate that is from road, uh, road accidents. Yeah. How, how is Tondeka, which claims or which wants to transform mobility, how is it going to deal with this gross tech statistic of people dying? Mm -hmm. How are you going to stop this road carnage and death mm -hmm. okay. on the road? Okay. Thank you, Hanson Moema. The When you look at the statistics, first of all, I want you to note that uh, all the countries that you have mentioned are basically third world countries. So the problems that afflict 
our public transport systems are similar. Um, we are using second-hand vehicles. Uh, we are having problems. Uh, of course, these vehicles have already done a lot of mileage out there. And so they, they are, are not in good shape. They are not in good shape when they, they are brought here. Um, the issues of, 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 for example, fake driving schools, people who are not trained, anybody can start a driving school, they are not certified. Uh, but you also know that uh, you can pay and get your permit. So we also have an issue of, of, of fake driving permits. We, for the last two years, we have been uh, trying to identify the best drivers uh, to use for the for, for the, our bus, yes, mm. for the mass bus transit system. We have actually been training them with Kira Motors on the use of these new buses. You must have been seeing some of the buses on the. Um, there's there's a bus I saw yes, doing on the some Kampala shuttle. Entebbe Road. You're doing a public shuttle. Is for a company? No, for now it is it's not public. Uh, we are using it to train to test the, the the systems on the buses. So you're transporting. I see people transporting in Tondeka. Yes, we Who have are those? we have uh, particular arrangements. For example, with the CAA to transport the Civil Aviation Authority to transport their staff. But uh, the way we operate is we, we deliver them, we take them to their workplace in the morning and then we drop them back in the evening. So the when, when do you, before we go into the, how you're going to tackle the problem <laughs> of the fakes within the industry, when is Tondeka bus service going to start? Because some people are skeptical. Mm. Two, three years ago there was a screaming headline. Yes. Government to import or to, yes, to avail 1,000 yeah. buses yes. in Kampala, yeah. CBD. Um, uh, two years down the road, uh, yes, we are middle-income status now, but yeah. no buses. Yeah. When are these buses coming? Okay, thank to you. Is the congestion and... Yes, we, we, we are ready actually to start this project in 2019. But uh, through the guidance of His Excellency the President, um, we were advised that we could partner with Kira Motors Corporation and have on these the buses built on the manufacture of the buses here, uh, which is very important for job creation. It's one of the big... And saving uh, of foreign exchange. And saving of foreign exchange. So we totally agree with the, with the government on this. So we had to take a step so back. So when are we having the buses? We are going to start having these buses here. With the f for the first phase, we are going to have 1,300 buses, um, of which about 1,100 are diesel but 200 are electric um we're going we to have electric buses yes we are we are going to have electric buses that is the way to go in the motor so when industry. are the buses beginning somebody is watching you now and yes. he's waiting he's watching your lips yes. tell us they come in how many we years? are going to start with the pilot on the entebbe road starting okay. mid july we are starting that is two weeks from now two weeks from now we are going to start with the few of the buses that are available now. How many? Basically test systems. We are, we are starting with uh, five diesel and two electric buses um, to basically continue to test our, our, our systems. Uh, we are going to have a highly digitized uh, public transport system. Um, in this, I mean that, uh, for example, we are going to have a card system, a cashless card fare system. Uh, where you simply swipe uh, uh, as you enter the bus, uh, and then the, the, it will be cashless. We, for example, are looking at uh, having um, automatic vehicle location, mm. an automatic vehicle location system on the bus, mm. so that we can control things like speed mm. on the bus. This will go a great way mm. to reduce accidents that we currently see mm. uh, on our roads. Mm. Um, we shall have many things, cameras, we shall have uh, a, a control center where we, we have real-time passenger information. We can quickly see what is happening on these buses, to be able to deal with the customer care issues and so on. Um, so the idea to build uh, lo the buses locally is a very good one. First of all, we are going to do away with the second-hand vehicles that we have been having on our roads that are causing this carnage. Um, this also brings in, when you have second hand, then you are constantly repairing this, it brings in the issue of counterfeit products. But, but uh, people can't afford the uh, new cars. Yes. Um, there are more than uh, a billion vehicles yeah. around the world. Yeah. But um, Africa accounts for less than 10% of the 
the market for the new vehicles. Yes. So somebody may think you're speaking out of reality yes. to, to think that you can get rid of uh, um, the fake yes. second-hand vehicles. Um, how do you answer that back? Thank you. And are the, you saying that the, all new vehicles are safe and you, yes. you cannot die in a new vehicle? No, no. So we don't exactly say that. We say we ca you can reduce on what is happening on our roads. But key to mention is that uh, if we introduce a superior sub public transport service, then there will be no need for you, for example, to drive, to drive my car. your personal car. Um, key, for example, is we want to be able to provide a service where public transport doesn't interrupt your work. You can continue your work on the bus. You will have Wi-Fi on the bus, you will have charging ports, you know, to a point where a lecturer... Of course, this will go a long way in also dealing with other partners, government, the Ministry of uh, Works and Transport, the uh, UNRWA, the Uganda Police, so that we can have good, a very good road network. But uh, in, as you know, in developed countries, you, you, uh, public transport doesn't stop you from continuing with other aspects of your life. Uh, you can work on the bus, you, a student can study on the bus, um, you know, if you, if you have free Wi-Fi and you can access your research and so on. So it is key that if we are going to introduce this service, the only way we can get the number of, we are looking at about 40%, of private vehicles off the road to create space. This will go a long way in reducing the current jams we are having that cause road rage, um, the, the, the congestion, the pollution. So key is that we also look at having a, a pushing for a green environment. Mm. Um, Talk about uh, pollution. Yes. Uh, there was a report I saw uh, which said that uh, the quality of air yes. in Kampala improved during the lockdown. Absolutely. Um, and um, so now that we have the vehicles back, yeah. the pollution is back. That is true. Um, are you bringing the buses as a replacement for the matatus? A lot of the, uh, if you like, unethical misconduct yes. uh, behavior on the roads yes. is coming from those friends of ours in the matatus. Yeah. You have an exit plan for the matatus? Are they going to go into the countryside? Ab absolutely. We actually or are going to have cause unemployment of all those guys. No, 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 no. Uh, that has also been key, and why we have delayed starting of the project, mm -hmm. uh, because government was key on ensuring that uh, we don't take the livelihoods away from these players. So where are, you, where so are the most of these going? players mm -hmm. are going to be? We have a, what we call a Tondeka uh, taxi feeder road project. They will be use, uh, bringing passengers on the first and last mile onto the buses, so we definitely have to coexist with them. That includes the, the taxis, the borders, the special hires, and everybody who is moving passengers. We have to look at their total well-being itself. It's a whole ecosystem that has to be successful. For example, I agree, the public uh, transport system has been quite informal. Uh, you have uh, drivers who are earning per day. They have to make money for the own of the vehicle. Who and demands who a certain demand. amount irrespective yes. of whether it rained or there were riots. Exactly. Um, so we, we have carried out an empathy map and uh, it tells us that the current players are all exhausted and they want us to go for more. So we have been building them. We are, going, we are building them. We are going to up their skills. We are going to absorb them as... Uh, as, as we, do, we don't call our drivers... Cap we don't call them drivers, we call them captains because the kind of person we are looking for is uh, somebody who can be able to offer this service that we want. Um, what you call the conductors, we are going to call stewards. Uh, being a cashless system, that means the person will basically be a customer service uh, agent who is there to deal purely with the traveling public and make sure they are comfortable. That eliminates very many things when you don't have cash. For example, some of the current problems in the, in the public transport, over 50% of them have to do with issues of what we call returning balance, change, lack of change, you know. So once you eliminate all that clutter, and then you, you can clean up the system. Uh, we Edward, we need to take a break. Yes. Uh, we're going for our second segment. Uh, when we return, uh, we want to learn uh, from Tondeka yes. how we can have a genuine public transport system using buses. Thank we you. need to take a break. We are back with the second 
part of our conversation here on fakes counterfeits in the public transport sector. We are here with the head of operations of uh, Tondeka, a public transport, a new public transport uh, outfit yeah. for Kampala. Yeah. Um, Edward, the one of the major things that I have seen, I know we're going to go into the other fakes yeah. within the, the parts and so on. One of the things I have seen is that a lot of the buses we have in the country uh, have been built or fabricated um, from Kenya and, and they look like they can actually carry a lot of people. I, I don't know whether the, 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 these buses are uh, supposed to carry that number of people, whether they the, the, the construction, the building is okay. C can you comment, as somebody who has been in this sector, these buses we are getting in, do they conform? Are they fake? We have had the number of issues that have... And how different will the Tondeka buses, buses be from those ones? Correct, thank you. We have a problem of re-engineering of some of these uh, buses. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple example, of course, most of these, what drives them is profit. And uh, if you don't balance the two, then you are going to have a big problem. For example, most of these buses, when they are brought in, they, in order to carry more passengers, more seats are added. And that's why... They add seats in the buses? Yes, they do. And that's why so you So like see I buy my car? Yes. It carries five people, yes. three behind and two in front, and I add a seat? You add uh, several seats, actually. And that's why you see normally when you sit in these public transport buses, your knees hardly have you hardly have the leg space because that is taken away by addition of extra seats. Sure. That means the buses are carrying an extra weight that they shouldn't be an carrying. An extra weight? Yes. And, and then also, also the wear and tear. The, the balancing. The balancing, the wear and tear on the, on the parts. Um, we already talked about second-hand vehicles that are brought. So you have an overloaded second-hand bus and what you have is the current road carnage we see. Um, but, but so you, you're saying that these buses are fabricated with, let's say, 60 passengers. Yeah. And then when they come into the country, yeah. they add another 20 seats. Maybe not 20. 10 Maybe seats. 12. Yeah, so, yes. And, and who is 12. regulating this? Uh, yes, they should be regulated. Uh, who regulates this sector? Specifications, for example, that have been shared between, uh, that we have shared with the National Bureau of Standards and uh, Kira Motors Corporation on what exactly how we should conform to these standards. They are standards, but... Uh, Who should be checking that these buses uh, are not fabricated to add more seats, for example? Uh, the Ministry of, of Works and Transport, together with many different players. Is there a transport licensing board or yes, something? Yes, there is. There is. So are you saying that a, a lot of the, the deaths that we have um, on the roads from these buses that are plying the routes comes from a structural defect, yes. design defect? Well, let me, for example, also give you another example. We have had situations where a, a chassis of a, a lorry, for example, an old lorry, a chassis they fabricate the, the body, yes, uh -huh. and sit it on an old chassis. So some buses sit yes. on the chassis of a lorry? Yes, they are, are re-engineered here. And, um, so what's wrong with that? A bus is strong, a lorry is not, strong? it's not stable. They, it's not meant to carry, for example, that to balance that kind of weight. Uh, some of them are, are old, are extremely. Uh, so, so you reckon how many of the buses we have in the country, in terms of percentage, how many of the buses are fake and not suitable for for public transport? Uh, of course, ten percent, fifty percent. Look at it this way: mm. you are dealing with second hand vehicles or buses that have already operated okay i mean how many are built on a chassis of a tractor no, or no, lorry no 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 they oh, what uh, are they the, many is it one or two yeah just a few i think they are just additional to what uh, i don't think they because are not the many. buses you see mm -hmm. the buses are crashing every day yes people are dying every day yes there are many other reasons for that as well the issues like the road conditions the issues of um, driver error um, human, human factor is key. Okay, but your point is, yes, we, the authorities that are in charge of clearing the buses to come yeah. must ensure. But what about the traffic police? 
Does we, the traffic police have information when they stop this bus? Yes. Do they have information on the standard specifications of this particular bus? To they, the extent that if they see 72 passengers instead of 60, they will tell the, the well, journey to abort? Or? Well, now, because the, the number of, because now what the traffic police officer will do is make sure everybody is sitting. So what he's doing is already dealing with a flawed system. That uh, so the, the seats have been inserted in. Uh, so instead of 60, maybe, you are now carrying 72 passengers. So he's okay with that. But of course, also, the issue that we have of corruption, uh, that these police officers simply let these uh, buses go on, uh, is also another... But the corruption, I don't think, can be blamed only on the police officers. No, no, no. From the time of the import, yes. uh, the licensing of the... It's a, it's a, yeah. it's so a what, problems. how different is Tondeka bus going to be from that one? What's special about your buses? Uh, to start with, we have the manufacturer of our buses with us. And you give the specifications? We have the specifications. They, we have shared this. Uh, they are producing buses according to the specification provided by the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. So it will not be, we will not, we will not cut corners. Inside seats and so on and so forth. No. We are going to operate the buses according to the way they should be operated. But of course also, we, there's an advantage that we are using brand new buses built in Uganda. So, you expect that these buses will be able to operate for some time, profitably, and by the time you start to deal with any defects, you have amassed some capital to them and put aside resources for this. Uh, that is the problem that these second-hand uh, buses don't have. From the word go, they need to make a break even. They're already getting mechanical problems. We have seen many instances of, uh, for example, counterfeit parts, vehicle parts like uh, shock absorbers, like brake pads, adulterated fuels and oils. Those are very big problems that also affect the operation of, the, of, uh, of these buses. Um, so we, we, we are going to work with the, with the Kira Motors Corporation make sure that we eliminate all these issues. But um, there can be a concern about um, importation because Kira Motors yeah. is an assembling plant. Okay? Uh, assembling. No, um, we are going to manufacture. Man, are you going to assemble or to manufacture? We are going to manufacture this. Person. Manufacture meaning that uh, you get the molds, yes. you, you get the parts yes. made here, you get the iron, the or you get the parts in? We will do it gradually. It will be yeah, gradual so the parts process. will come in. And yes. my question there is, yes. it might be new, but yes. still be fake. So if you, you import a part yes. that is already manufactured yes. uh, out there, yes. and it does not meet the specification, yes. it will be new, yes. but you put it there because the gauge is low and so on, yes. you still have a fake new, new product. product. Okay. How are you going to ensure that the new buses you get don't have fake new parts. Okay, even by starting with that uh, process, one, we are building capacity. We are building local capacity mm -hmm. to deal with these issues. So yes, in the beginning we may have some issues, but over time, we Where are going to Where are the parts coming from, of Kira Motors? Uh, because a lot of the fakes yes. that Africa consumes come yes. from Southeast Asia. Yes. And you know the countries there. Yes. China, India, all those things. Yes. How sure are we that our new buses will not have the cheap, you know, uh, cheap but new fake parts to come and then you assemble buses for us. Okay. What? We shall still have the same problem. Okay. We have done this because we are just introducing mm. the mass bus transit system in Kampala. Mm. Uh, we have partnered with people who have experience. For example, we they have, have a track record. Yes, that have a track record. We are partnering, for example, with RIHT Holdings. Mauritius, they have operated uh, a mass bus transit for the last uh, 56 years in Mauritius. Up to now, they're operating buses, over 100 buses. And uh, we are using, going to use their experience in management, in operations, uh, to start for the first four years of our operations. So we are partnering with people who have this technical know-how. So they are also the helping you yes. To ensure to that whatever bus that you correct. use is fit for purpose. Fit for purpose, correct. So that we don't have fake new things. Exactly. And uh, Tondeka, yeah. 
you say you're going to be operational from uh, the next two two weeks. Yes, you'll right. start. Mm -hmm. How are you going to deal with the competition, or do you have competition um, here? The other bus companies. Yes. We, are, are you finding a way of uh, working, uh, working with or alongside them, or in this area of public transport, you don't have competition? Because uh, I see some buses in, yes, in the city. Yes, for now, yes, there are some buses in the city. Yeah. But as you can see, most of them are basically being phased out. They are old. They uh, have been in operation for some time. Um, this project, uh, to be profitable for now, to be able to provide the level of service that we want, our government has given us, uh, has given us the opportunity to provide this service. We are doing it with many other players, especially those who have been in the public transport uh, sector, Utoda, uh, Utrada, Utrada, all these different organizations uh, are part and parcel of this project. But also because we are going to absorb them into the system. First of all, for example, it's not easy to get a bus captain, or what you call a driver. You know that, for example, a, a qualified bus driver has to be 35 years to 55 years. There's a age limit on who a driver can Only be? A driver, yes, correct. It is 35 so, years? Yes, 35 years. Yeah. Oh, that's the international standard? That is the international standard. So we are going to use people who have already been driving these buses. But of course, key to note also that, uh, is that you can't simply pick somebody who has been driving intercity, what we call up country, and bring him to drive a, a city bus service because of the number of stops, the, the closeness of the stops. Uh, for example, driving, I have said, at 20 to 25 kilometers per hour. So these people need a different skill set. So this training has been going on for the last two years with some of these drivers to upgrade them to be able to drive the, the city bus service. Um, we are doing this together with the Minister of Works um, to make sure that we have qualified drivers when we start. Together with Are you going to do companies. anything um, to help in the sensitization of the users of public transport? Because um, every year we lose about 1.3 million people yes. um, in uh, road accidents, the majority of whom are in the low and middle income countries. Uh, in fact, it's estimated we're going to lose more than 300 billion yeah. in economic output in the next couple of years uh, because of fakes. So the largest number yeah. uh, out of the 1.3 million people who die every year, yeah. the majority of them are pedestrians, that is true. Uh, motorcyclists and cyclists, yeah. meaning that the ordinary person uh, is a big victim and probably yeah. needs a lot of sensitization uh, to travel safely, yeah. to avoid what is Tondeka going to do to keep the users of the public transport yes. safe yes. and maybe even to avoid unsafe yes. public transport? Okay, thank you. Um, today, the most efficient way to do it mm. is to do it electronically. Uh, so Tondeka, we have already started working with the different uh, civil society organizations on uh, road accidents, for example, uh, organizations like Ureno, Uganda Road Reduction, Accident Reduction Network, the Nicole Foundation, um, to sensitize the public. You do radio programs or you are going to do it here? Programs like this? Yes, we are going mm. to do all these kind of programs. Mm. But also key is that uh, we are going to, for example, you will have an app on your phone. We expect to have this app um, on up to 2 million Currently, we have about 2.6 million people traveling using the public transport system in, in Uganda or in Kampala, in, in the greater Kampala metropolitan area. Mm. And uh, so we are going to be able to reach out to these people using a number of platforms uh, on the buses, through screens, uh, in the terminals that we are going to have. We are going to have what we call um, uh, transport hubs. Um, on each of the major, for example, roads in and out of the CBD, uh, so that uh, 
you can park your vehicle in these hubs. We'll have park and ride facilities along the route so that you can leave your home, come onto the main road, mm. park your vehicle, jump onto the bus, go to work or hospital or school, and then come back, pick your car and drive back home. Um, this is because the buses will be on the first tier roads. These are low The main bikes. roads? Yeah, on the main roads. Mm. Um, because city buses are low flow buses. Uh, because we are dealing with issues low like clearance. persons, yeah, low clearance, because mm. you are dealing with persons with reduced mobility, so we need to, take, to cater for them. So these buses uh, will be operating on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the first tier roads, and then you will be driving from, for example, your home onto the road. Or using another mode of get transport. the transport yes and get get into get the in office Edward yes. we need to take a break uh, yes. when we return yes. um, we shall be talking about the inspection yes. uh, of the public transport, transport. buses yes. uh, they might be fake after they have come in yes. but do we actually have inspection okay. we take a break We're back with the third and last segment of this conversation. Uh, we are here dealing with the head of operations, uh, Tondeka, a public transport uh, outfit for the city. And we are discussing uh, counterface effects in the public sector. Edward, you have highlighted uh, the challenges of some buses coming in and then they are being tampered with. Um, I'm just wondering if we do not have mandatory regular inspection of these buses mm. that if it came in and you added some seats mm. uh, you will not be able to jump the next inspection sure. which will now take out the seats if there were any extras mm. what is the state of inspection of public transport buses in uganda okay the state of inspection um i'll, I'll start with the issue of sgs so such, sgs yes um, what is SGS? The guy is the Swiss company. The Swiss company that, is that does to, um, yes, regular inspection. inspections. But those ones do inspection for, I think, imports? Uh, they also inspect buses? Uh, yes, they do. Actually, most of our buses go to them for inspection well, as soon as they leave the, the where plant. Is the, where is the inspection they, for vehicles done? They have is it there? I thought it was removed. Uh, no, no. Uh, you as an individual can go to them and have your vehicle. Although the issue was whether to make it mandatory for everybody to. So are you saying we don't have mandatory inspection of vehicles uh, in Uganda? No, we don't. It's not being enforced. It's not so then why are we complaining the that uh, we are dying on the roads and so on? Don't you think that, that inspection, is, yes. failure to do inspection is a, a cause for these accidents? Yes, and that is where legislation is very, very important that uh, it needs to be passed that uh, these vehicles should have a regular uh, inspection to ensure that they are road roadworthy. Um, but uh, should we just have annual inspection? Uh, something like uh, a bus doing a regular transport? Don't you have weekly yes, inspections? You Must you wait for the year? No, no, or no. Or even no, no, daily? No. Actually, they should be daily inspections. Every time the bus exits and comes, but also the driver should be trained to constantly, at every stage of his travel, to inspect his bus. So it is a, it's a continuous process. But also key is to have properly and professionally trained uh, inspectors and build this <laughs> pool. So we also need to train yes. the bus inspectors. You are saying that uh, uh, we have fake bus inspectors? Uh, let, let me Not put, qualified? No, no, let me put it this way. Uh -huh. um, for example, it is key that uh, the message on road safety doesn't start at the point of inspecting. For example, we should have it in our curriculums in schools, in the primary and secondary schools, so that by the time you come now to start driving, you have some basic information. Most of us interact with uh, road safety signs and information when we want to get the driving permit. That's when you go to read the road signs and, uh, and cram them for the purposes of passing, passing the test. The test. That should and not after be you, test. you get the driving permit, yes, you, you forget, forget about, about the permits. Them. I yes. mean the, 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 the road, road signs. signs and yes. so, so, so you can see that it's a whole 
system. It's a whole ecosystem that needs to be worked on, to be streamlined. So the inspectors mm -hmm. are also need to be inspected? Yes, they need to be supervised. They need to, be, to, to get refresher training. The, the, the technology is, is rapidly changing. Motor vehicle technology. But For example, now, Edward, yes. so as a country, yeah. how are we really going to be a destination for investment, a destination yeah. for tourists, if the mode of mobility yeah. in, in the country is sick? Um, I mean, the government, that is what we are working on. That is why we are coming on board. How many should system. die before you work on it? That is true. We, most of these things we are talking about, for example, we are studied on by, for example, Kampala City Council in 2010 to 2012. So this is when this was, should have been implemented. So we are way behind. Uh, but also, of course, if you look at, if you look in the region, you'll see that uh, the mass bus transit, for example, has been started in Nairobi, in Dar es Salaam, in Kigali. So yeah, we are moving a bit slow. But of course, it's just to get everything right and perfect, done well, uh, so that uh, we, as much as possible, uh, deal with the uh, issues that might come. You see, here on this program, we yes. have several drivers who have identified yes. for counterfeiting, yes. um, including failure to depreciate for, for yes. products. Um, but in the case of services, yes. uh, one of the biggest drivers we have found yes. uh, is negligence yes. and ineffective cooperation. Yeah. And I am seeing that there is a uh, probably uh, a big red flag there yes. in terms of uh, negligence yes. on the regulation yes. of the public transport sector. How do we tackle this and what are the other drivers of this kind of behavior okay. uh, in the public uh, transport sector? Yeah. Um, you mentioned one of them. Why the is, negligence? Um, you mentioned one of them which is uh, sensitization. But of course, the motive for profit is key. Uh, for example, when you talk about the counterfeit products, uh, in January 2021, um, a company came all the way from Europe to report that uh, its products were being sold, fake products under its name were being sold. Um, what was that company? Uh, it was SFB. SKF. SKF, yes. Correct. The bearing company. The bearing company. I yes. was there during the. Yes. There was an operation with yes. Interpol and the police. Yes. Who were invited. And, and why does it have to start there? Why can't we start it here? Why did it have to take a company to come all the way? Somebody should be saying, hey, hold on. Where are you getting this stuff from? Of course, a businessman will simply. Some of the businessmen, that time, one of them said he lost 100 million shillings. Of course, we can't say he's, he's innocent about this because he knows he's trying to cut corners. But who is supposed to supervise this process to make sure whatever is being imported um, is genuine? That's, I think, where we need to start. And um, you know what is so worrying is that um, the majority uh, of uh, motor accidents, mm. the majority of people between five and 29 years, the leading cause of death for that age group is motor accident. Yes. Whereas motor accidents uh, in the world, they rank number eighth uh, yeah. as a cause of death. Yes. For the age group, five to twenty-nine, yeah. they are dying on the road. That is. True. Uh, and this is a country uh, that has a majority of the youth. Yes. Uh, so, don't you think that the negligence or proper regulation yeah. of ensuring genuine service in the public uh, transport sector? is actually hampering our economic progress and even this middle income status we have is going to be eroded yeah. because of this uh, uh, you know, impact on the, on the youth, on the young people. Uh, that is correct. Uh, but for us who are behind the scenes, mm -hmm. the government is, is working hard to, to put right um, all these. Um, and uh, one of them, like I have said, is encouraging people through producing a superior public transport system to move away. Of course, it can, a lot also happens because of the congestion, the jams. You know, this causes road rage. You have seen people in the jam, you know. Um, these accidents happen because people are fatigued. Some of these bus drivers you see, 
uh, of course they you know the hours for example a bus driver should not drive beyond eight hours and in those eight hours he should have a break after every four hours or 30 minutes uh, so he, what we have is a situation where somebody is driving from dawn to dusk and uh, so this this fatigue but we have a practice here yeah. the wagaga the 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 bosses, the people with the money, he has six matatus. Yes. And uh, for him, he wants a certain amount of money per day. Yes, that is a big And there problem. is one driver to that thing. Sometimes yes. the turn boy or the conductor has to drive as well. Yes. Yes. You think it. that the private sector people, many of them are engaging in these uh, fake practices and actually also causing to the carnage? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Like I've said, the motive of profit uh, also needs to be regulated. Mm. You know, we need to balance between uh, the livelihoods of our people, the health, mm. and, and making profit. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's key that uh, with the introduction of the mass bus transit system, we are going to be able to, to do that. We are going to have people, less people, driving private cars, coming onto this. And more, more, more getting onto, onto public, public transport. Onto public transport. Uh, and. Uh, you, I mean, if you were given the choice to either drive or move on a very organized public transport system, like they do in most of these advanced economies, they have moved from where we are to where we want to be. So by introducing this, we, we think we are going to go a very long way in dealing with most of these issues that you are raising. One of the, the, the very, very unfortunate things uh, is that once a, an accident or a crash has happened on the road, uh, the media is very fast to report uh, so many dead. The cause of accident was the brakes and there was a skid. And uh, the media never follows up uh, to find out um, who yes. imported those uh, brake parts. Yes. Uh, the driver, did they have a driving permit? Uh, what is the status of the case? Yeah. Um, they, they lose interest. That is true. Uh, they only like the sensational part, two dead, three dead, yeah, this particular right. bus company. Do you think the media should play a better role Absolutely. in helping us to tackle this road carnage? Absolutely. And as Tondeka, we are working together with the media mm. and we are going to work with them closely to, for example, sensitize the population on, on, on safe road use, um, on, on, on passenger behavior, uh, we are going to. It is, you are correct, you are really uh, correct that uh, the media has a big role to play in mm. getting this information out there. Um, we shouldn't only report sensational news, we should be able to dig deeper, uh, but also look at it from the other side that. Uh, if you have a digitized system, this information you will have on your fingertips. So the media will have it. I think what we have is, is, is a very manual system, which even the media finds extremely difficult to get this information. So they go with what they can see for now. But uh, now that we are going to have a, an automated system, we will be able to generate this information for them uh, very quickly mm. on spots for the accidents, on you know, because we, we are going to have this information in real time. The other thing um, we have noticed is that uh, uh, the media and, and the investigation, uh, the authorities, it, it is very easy yeah. to blame most, if not all, of the accidents on the driver. Never mind the, there are some bad drivers and so on. <clears throat> Can you comment on our capacity? to detect defects, for example, in the bus, those you've been talking, do we have a national capacity to detect these defects? Uh, or are we just going to continue blaming it was the driver, it was the driver? Yes, uh, most of the studies actually, or if you look at the police reports, mm. they, they say 85% of the cause of accidents is human error. But I think this is because of their deficient in determining the actual cause. Of, for example, on things like, uh, we have talked about the counterfeit products things as basic as, as light. You know, you, you, you buy lights, you're not getting enough light at night, you can't see the, an object right in front of you, or they blow immediately, you have fixed them. 
issues. So the lights could be fake, you're not yes. able to see. You're not able to the see wipers are the also wipers fake, are fake. So or they are scratching the windscreen. You have steering road braking. And somebody doesn't understand why the vehicle is not responding to what to the direction in which he wants to turn. And many people simply assume that it is a uh, human factor. No. We have seen, for example, in these developed economies, vehicles such as GM, General Motors, and uh, Volkswagen recalling vehicles. So what happens to the Volkswagen and, the, and, the, and, the, and these vehicles that are in, that have been brought into our country? Talk about recalls. Yes. Uh, I, I know that uh, the only country with a, a law yes. on, on recalls, yes. uh, I think, for motor vehicles is South Africa. South Africa for now, yes. uh, though Kenya, other countries have consumer protection laws, but yes. specifically on vehicles. Yes. Um, and, and so you think that the fact that a Volkswagen, a yeah. Toyota yeah. Model 2010 will be recalled yeah. and we are busy watching TV and seeing it's recalled and we continue driving, you think that speaks to our ignorance or it speaks to our suicidal tendencies? Do we have like a suicide pack? I mean, why <laughs> should we continue using? and driving something we've just seen on TV, TV yes. to be defective. Um, it, it, this has a lot to do with uh, these vehicles being status symbols. You know, we all enjoy driving this uh, status kind of, symbol. Uh, yes. So you have a so status symbol, symbol that has but, been condemned. But, yes, that has been condemned. And you know, these vehicles these days, uh, these advanced, technological advanced vehicles, you only need for it to switch off. You have seen that most of them, the CPUs or what we call the computers uh, in these vehicles uh, cannot operate, for example, with the environment of the dust. So over time you are engineering it and most of its uh, uses along the way are phased out. And then as you are driving, for example, the engine switches off. That means you have no control over your brakes, you have no control over your steering, you have no control. Things as simple as your airbags. You know? And uh, all of a sudden, but because we don't have the capacity to turn in this, it is assumed that it is human and um, reckless drive. So we also need so to enhance our capacity. We there. need to enhance our capacity to, to, to be able to detect. And detect, uh, especially with uh, this because we're talking about Edward we are about to close yes. uh, but right now there is a public outcry yes. on the cost of fuel yes. and Tondeka is saying uh, it is going to transform mobility yes. how are you going to transform mobility with these high fuel prices and is there a special arrangement what should the public yes. uh, expect from you are your charges going to be low do you have a special source of, of fuel or whatever because fuel is a big factor. Yes. High fuel prices. Yes. Thank you. We have looked at a number of factors. Uh, one well, that's why you're going to use uh, electricity. Yes, uh, that is key. Mm. That is key. In fact, government um, has given us a KPI that uh, for the next fleet of buses we are going to have, after this first fleet of 1,300, they are going to have to all be electric. But uh, yes, we believe the way to go now is electric. Of course, the electric buses are, uh, are more expensive than the diesel buses. By about three to one. They are more expensive? Yes, they are. So there's the initial cost of the investment. But over time, you are able to recoup that cost. Especially now, with the increase in the cost fuel of prices. fuel. Yes. And so we, we, we believe that uh, this will also encourage all of us to jump onto an organized public transport system and leave these cars home and promote the green Improve economy. Our health, yeah, and because the, green the economy. electricity buses do not yes, not emit uh, this. Uh, As we close, uh, any personal encounter you've had with uh, counterfeits? Yes. Any product, and then your message to the viewers. Thank uh, you. On how to avoid counterfeits? Um, dear viewers, it's very very important that. Uh, you buy from registered dealers of these products. I've had a personal experience. You know, you buy a shock, shock absorbers, and two weeks down the road, they are worse than the ones which were in the vehicle. Um, but I've been able to deal with it by, by going to the registered dealers. Uh, 
buying this equipment. Where they give you a warranty. Where they give you a warranty, you know, like city tires and all these other uh, well-established uh, uh, Caspia shops. Mm. Um, that is key in, in enabling us to avoid this kind of freak accidents that we are having in the city and also being able to save lives. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Uh, that has been uh, uh, Edward. Uh, your other name is not easy to pronounce, Ula but uh, he is the head of operations uh, Tondeka, um, a premium um, uh, new generation, okay. if, yes. if you like, a digitized uh, a transport system that they'll be offering uh, to Kampala. He says the buses are expected uh, in the next uh, two weeks for those on Entebbe Road. I think you'll be seeing them soon. Uh, we hope that you have again learned one or two things about uh, counterface this time in the public uh, transport sector as always we would like to thank you for being a good audience uh, a good audience that tunes in and contributes uh, to the collective effort to fight counterfeits from wherever we are uh, we would like to sign off by asking you not to be fake to buy and sell genuine always